And this is Robert Touchton with MR Systems and today we're going to cover using the Wonderware OI server gateway to communicate to an OPC UA server that only uses a self-signed certificate. So right out of the box the FS gateway in the old DA servers does not support UA so we will have to install the OI core from Wonderware before we can install the OI gateway. So what we have installed today is the OI core 2.05 and I've installed the, the OI gateway 2.0. So once you have downloaded and installed both of these from Wonderware you can open up the SMC, the System Management Console, and under Operations Integration Server Manager, as you keep expanding out, you're going to have the OI Integration Supervisory Servers. And once you install the gateway, you're going to have the Wonderware Gateway, the OI Gateway that you can continue to expand and under configuration by default it's going to have OPC and OPC UA uh, as the two default node types. So I've already got filled in to, in this example uh, the mission RTUs their server uses self-signed certificates. So once you put in the, the server node name the OPC UA server drop-down will automatically populate. And then we're going to expand out the advanced configuration, select sign, the basic 256, and then enter your username and password. Once you've done that, you're going to have to save the changes, and you need to make sure that your server is actually activated. So I've already activated uh, by default it's going to be deactivated so you will need to, to right click and select activate. Once the OI server tries to go out and communicate to the UA server under your log view you're going to have errors talking about a self that it doesn't allow the self-signed certificate so we're going to have to navigate under C program data OPC foundation certificate stores rejected certificates and certs and you're going to have the MC OPC UA server certificate. This certificate was rejected because it is a self signed certificate. So now we're going to actually have to go download the OPC foundation development tools and install them. You can find them. on the opcfoundation.org the unified architecture if you scroll to the bottom this is the latest version I downloaded and installed the OPC developer tools you're going to launch once you've installed it you're going to launch the OPC UA dashboard from here you're going to go to the, U, the UA configuration tools and from this UA configuration tool we're going to be able to tell the, F, uh, to tell the OI gateway to trust that self-signed certificate. So the first tab that we want to go to is manage certificates 
and on the drop down for date uh, store type we're going to select the directory under store path you want to select the common application OPC foundation certificate store machine default and then we're going to select import certificate to store we're going to go to program data OPC foundation certificate stores UA discovery PKI own we're going to select the UA LD S cert dot DER and then on the import certificate of trust yes and then we're going to go to the Manage Security tab, and we need to choose the OPC UA Discovery Server. And then select Edit. Now next to Certificate, we're going to select Browse. from the store type make sure that directory is selected and that machine default is also selected we're going to go down and select the UA local discovery server and select OK And then on the trust list, we're going to click Browse. Make sure that it's Windows and UA application. Select OK. And then select OK again. And on the, if the file does exist, select Yes for overwrite. And then we're going to go back to Manage Certificates. On the store type, select Windows. And on the, the store path, select UA Applications. And now we're going to import the certificate that was rejected. I've went ahead and uh, copied that to the desktop to make it easier uh, to find it. So now we're going to go to import certificate to store. I can just go to the desktop and choose the MC OPC UA server and select open. And yes, I would like to trust that certificate. Go back to manage security. And on the application type, make sure you have Discovery Server so, uh, selected in the drop down. And then now we're going to select a certificate to trust. And we're going to choose the MC OPC UA. Uh, first of all, we want to make sure that the Windows is selected. and that UA application is selected. And now we're going to select the MC OPC UA. Select OK. And now 
this certificate is trusted. We can close the UA configuration tool and the unified architecture from OPC Foundation. And now your OPC UA will be able to provide data to an InTouch application. In the next video, we're going to go through the how to add the InTouch access names and format the tag names to pull data from the this OPC UA server. This is Chris Bush with MR Systems, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to store and restore a program using the SD card for the Control Logics processor. Now it's uh, very inconvenient whenever a processor dies, but I'm going to show you the steps to recover it without actually having to use the program as long as you do the uh, legwork ahead of time. So I've got a program here that I am online with, and I'm going to show you how to store uh, the program and back it up to the SD card. So the first thing you do is you will be here with your program online. You will go to the uh, controller properties and it'll come up here and you'll go to the non-volatile memory t tab. Now to do this you have to actually be in the program mode so you would need to shut down any processes running on this PLC. So I'm going to put it in program mode. And now it gives me the option to load store. There's currently something on this SD card, but I'm going to overwrite it. So when you click on the load store, you're going to get the option for either loading from the card or storing. You're going to have a couple different options here. You'll have the load image option, and that's when to actually load it. Um, on power up means every time it powers down, if it finds that the program is not on there, it will actually load it in. On corrupt memory, if it sees that there is no program or it's in fault, it can reload it. And then user initiated would be, you would have to actually come into the program and click the load button. So I'm going to do on power up and then load mode, either in program or run. So if you were to restore it, it can either come up in the program mode or it can come up in the run mode. I'm going to check the run button. And then the last option here is the automatic firmware update. Now, if you're trying to recover a program with a brand new processor because the old processor has died on you, uh, this is you'd want to check this. It'll actually load the firmware files to get it to the exact same version it was before as well. So once you do that, you click store, and it's going to pop up with a box saying basically that you're not going to be able to talk to this controller during this process. So I'll hit continue with store and then it'll tell you what is not going to get stored in here. Continue with the store, yes. And at this point it will kick me offline. Now it'll take a couple minutes and if you're looking at the front of the controller you can actually see where it is saving. So once this is done, uh, I will get a different processor and I will show it reloading. So I'm going to pause the video here for a moment and when we pick up again, I'm going to be on a unprogrammed controller. Alright, so now that we're back and we have an empty controller, um, I am going to try to go online with this. And as you'll see, there is no program in the controller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power cycle it. And that should reload the program. So now it takes about a, about a minute and the program should be reloaded.
So now we are back online, and as you can see, it is our program back running again um, without having to download. Now this is useful for when you change out a processor. If this had been one that didn't have any firmware in it, it would have reloaded the firmware and reloaded the program, and you'd be ready to go without ever actually having to go online with the next one. So that's been a how-to, and uh, thanks for watching.